Um, once again, thank you very much for, for hosting LifeRay. We're very, very pleased to be here. Thank you to uh, Software Fair Linux, our partner. Um, Software Fair has been working with LifeRay, has a history with LifeRay about four years now, uh, two of those years as a partner uh, of LifeRay. Uh, they were the uh, recipients of the uh, Community Excellence Award in 2011, and uh, they worked on, I think, over 25, maybe 30 projects, LifeRay projects uh, over the years. Uh, we're very pleased to be here, very pleased with uh, our relationship with uh, Software for, for this particular market. And uh, I'm here today to kind of give you an overview of, of LifeRay, I'll tell you a little bit about our technology, some of the new features in our latest release. Uh, before uh, turning over to uh, to the projects themselves. So with that, let me just uh, begin. Also, if I'm speaking too quickly, please uh, raise your hand, let me know. I'll be more than happy to slow down. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, be, please feel free to interrupt me. I don't, uh, I don't mind. Uh, I'd rather you ask a question while it's on your mind uh, and then to hold it and perhaps not get it answered. Uh, we're here to answer these questions. We're here to present information to you. So uh, this road show is for you. So beginning with LifeRay, if you're not familiar with LifeRay, we uh, are the open source leader for enterprise portal technology. We define that as a, a horizontal portal. Uh, the definition of a horizontal portal uh, by the analysts in the industry is a horizontal platform, uh, a single entry point into this platform that can host a variety of enterprise web needs. Our technology is not biased towards any particular vertical market. Uh, it is applicable, uh, the functionality is applicable in any market, whether it's financial, healthcare, commercial, e-commerce, uh, B2B, B2C, whatever the case may be. And as we go into the, product, uh, the technology itself and the capabilities themselves, uh, you'll see that this is going to be borne out. But uh, really from the open source uh, side of the fence, there's really only two offerings for a true horizontal portal. There's LifeRay uh, and there's JBoss. Uh, JBoss has largely become irrelevant in terms of where they're at with their portal technology, uh, with their updating of new, new features in their technology. There's a little graph here. I think you can see it up there. Uh, basically, just based on number of downloads over the past decade, uh, if you can see where LifeRay has been, we've been trending upwards over the past decade. The, and just, just in terms of looking at people that are downloading LifeRay versus well, those not downloading JBoss, while JBoss has remained fairly flat over the past decade, the interest and the buzz and the uh, um, downloads for LifeRay has been on an upward trend, uh, on, a, on a dramatic upward trend. Uh, Gartner Magic Quadrant, I'm sure you're familiar with Gartner, it's a US analyst group. They have uh, what they call the Garden, uh, Magic Quadrants, and specifically for the Magic Quadrants for horizontal portals. Uh, this is uh, looking at our particular segment, our uh, particular uh, um, capabilities. Gartner moved us in, in 2011 from the uh, visionary quadrant down here in the lower right up into the leadership quadrant, and uh, we've re retained this position as of uh, October of 2011. So with that one stroke, they put us into the same ring of competition as the, the large, what we call the 500-pound the gorillas of the industry, Microsoft, IBM, and Oracle. Oracle. Primarily, the, that is who we compete with. We don't necessarily compete too much with the other open source uh, portal type offerings, uh, TIBCO, Drupal, uh, OpenText. Uh, for the most part, we never run into them in the, in, in, in the market. Primarily, who we're running into is Microsoft, IBM, and Oracle. So on the one hand, it was a, it was a huge honor for us as a small, young company to be moved into the, into the leadership quadrant of the magic quadrant. On the other hand, it was, a, it was a huge challenge for us to step up to the plate and actually deliver against these companies. And I think that we have, with our last two offerings of LifeRay, we've really stepped up the game in terms of the offering, in terms of the product capabilities. We're not simply a low-cost alternative to IBM or Oracle, but rather we have technology that stands on its own uh, with regards to who we are, uh, what we do, what we're able to deliver in a solution package. Uh, some of the metrics that Gartner uses to calculate their magic quadrants, not simply features, although they do look at features, they look at the ROI of our product, but they also take a look at the company, the company's financial health, the management team, uh, our overall ability to execute. And based on those metrics, they've moved us into the magic, into the leadership quadrant. Uh, this this uh, um, report, by the way, is available at Gartner.com, or you can go to LifeRay.com. There's a link to it. You can download and read the whole report in terms of their analysis of, of our product. Uh, so some of the most common use cases from Gartner, this is uh, Gartner's own polling 
and uh, querying of our, of our customers. But some of the most common use cases of LifeRay from Gardner, knowledge management collaboration portals, uh, business performance portals, dashboards, et cetera, business process improvement portals, uh, customer engagement portals. That's what, how we at LifeRay use LifeRay portal. Uh, LifeRay.com is built on LifeRay. We, we drink our own Kool-Aid, as we say. Uh, everything that we do in LifeRay is based on LifeRay portal, but we use it as a customer engagement and marketing sales and customer service portal. Uh, supply applied management, really any website, any web application, any web-based uh, uh, capacity that you need to host on an enterprise level is, uh, is supported by LifeRay, whether it's internet, extranet, whether it's multi-tenanted, whether it's partner client types of, uh, of uh, um, sites, whether it's simply using LifeRay as an SOA or a web development platform. All of these, uh, all of these different types of applications are supported by LifeRay. This next slide just kind of gives you a, a, a very high level uh, logical overview of what LifeRay is. If you imagine there's a, a black line here, uh, if you imagine that's being the platform, uh, and on top of the LifeRay platform, uh, you can build any B2B, B2C, B2E type of uh, website types of applications, uh, whatever they might be, whether it's internal, external facing. Uh, we have a roles-based content delivery system that allows you to build hierarchy organizational uh, sites into your, into your site, whether it's a corporate site, whether it's a partner or client site. Uh, whether it's breaking down you, one particular department into different to hierarchical groups. Everything is driven by our roles-based permissioning that allows you to very tightly control on a granular level what a particular user or group of users sees or doesn't see. Uh, social applications, the collaboration piece of LifeRay, whether it's you're using it for uh, your internal sales and engineering or whether you're using it for customers. We'll be showing you a little bit of that too as well. And uh, ERP portals. Um, any kind of EIA type of portal, uh, type of application. And then, of course, underneath the platform, we're, su we're supported by web services, API calls, uh, JSR 286 portlet standard, whether you're uh, integrating a back-end ERP, accounting, HR, CRM package. Uh, and then on the other side, we're also uh, able to aggregate other applications, other websites, Salesforce, PeopleSoft, whatever the case may be for your particular organization. So uh, what we're really trying to show here is how LifeRay can be, uh, due to its flexibility for integration, it can be an aggregator for many disparate systems. If you're uh, coming from a legacy uh, a type of application, you have Salesforce and PeopleSoft and uh, maybe SAP, and you need to pull everything together, LifeRay is a good platform to be able to aggregate all of these different applications, these different functionalities these different data repositories into a single user interface, into a single administration interface, into a single uh, view that you can publish out to your users. And then, of course, once you bring it in, LifeRay handles all the authorizations and all the content uh, uh, authorizations via our, our uh, roles-based permissioning. So some of the uh, um, main reasons for adoption of LifeRay, modular web application development, uh, we do uh, make it very, very easy for you to develop in LifeRay. We provide a developer studio, that was what we called it, which is um, essentially an Eclipse-based IDE with uh, LifeRay-specific plugins deployed uh, to make it easy for people that perhaps don't have a lot of Java uh, background moving in from maybe perhaps the .NET or PHP world to have a, a graphical uh, interface, a wizard-driven interface to be able to do your development of any kind, whether it's customizing existing features in LifeRay, whether it's building new features within LifeRay, uh, whether it's integrating other types of applications or, or websites, etc. We can develop in any language, integrate any application. There's never a, any limitations in terms of the integration from LifeRay's perspective. We have an open API. We provide our, uh, all the plugins, SDKs. We provide all the source code. We provide all the tools that will allow you to integrate any external third-party application. The only limitations you're ever going to run into are really from that third-party source, whether they're providing APIs to you, whether they're providing an SDK to you. Uh, but from LifeRay's side, it's completely open. And that really is something that comes from our open source legacy. We embrace the idea uh, of allowing you to customize and extend LifeRay to make it work for your organization, as opposed to dictating to you what our vision for you is, what your portal should be, what your website should be, what your social site should be. Uh, we'll give you all the flexibility to do what you need to do for yourselves. Uh, we do have an identity-based content delivery, as I, as I mentioned, a very fine-grained uh, roles-based permissioning system that I'll hopefully show you here shortly. 
uh, any kind of social identity application development that you can do within LifeRay. Uh, depth of UI tooling and the design focus of LifeRay, we give you uh, tools for the UI. We have something called Alloy UI, which is a toolkit that goes along with the developer studio that I mentioned as a part of the development tools. These are, uh, it's based on the Y UI uh, um, standards, but basically it's a whole toolkit of pre-built components that allows you to very rapidly build new portlets or extend portlets or build web applications. Uh, all of the code can be encapsulated for reuse. Um, this whole idea, uh, this paradigm of create once and use many, many times is something that you'll find permeates all the way through LifeRay. Our approach and our philosophy is not to force you to redo repetitive tasks over and over again, but rather allow you to build something once, whether it's creating a piece of content, whether it's pre creating a piece of HTML, whether it's creating a, a custom portlet, to be able to reuse what you've done uh, as many times as you want to, to uh, to really speed up the whole development cycle. And then, of course, the quality and depth of the, of the product itself. Uh, there's two versions of LifeRay. There is the community edition of LifeRay, and there's also an enterprise version of LifeRay. Both versions are built off the same trunk, but uh, the enterprise version of LifeRay, which is the one that is supported, is actually trunked off, and once it's branched off, it becomes its own code base. It's actually a distinct uh, branch of the code, and it goes into our own uh, QA process. We have a facility out in California that uh, uh, has, we have a banks and banks of, I think, 250 Hudson servers set up with every possible conceivable stack that you can imagine, whether it's a Solaris stack, Linux stack, Windows stack, uh, all set up different databases, different app servers, and all different configurations. The enterprise code goes and gets crunched through that process on a 24 by 7 basis. Uh, basically, what we're trying to do is break the code, find the bugs, find the weaknesses, find the vulnerabilities. And uh, what comes out of that is a much more stable, much more optimized much more hardened version of LifeRay that is suitable for the types of enterprise clients that came to us really looking for something a little bit more professional than the Community Edition. This is not to say the Community Edition is not a valid edition. It is a very, it's a very powerful tool. Uh, most of our innovation, uh, the cutting edge technology is happening on the community. Uh, however, for those uh, enterprises looking for a stable, uh, business-ready, enterprise-ready version of LifeRay, we do offer the enterprise version. So the model is not unlike like Red Hat versus Red Hat Enterprise or MySQL versus MySQL Enterprise. We have the same type of model and uh, the two different types, uh, two different versions. Um, this next slide, just, just a small sampling, high-level high view of some of our customers. And really what I wanted to show here is just the idea that uh, we are horizontal in nature. Uh, as you can see from this slide, we've got uh, customers ranging from, from gaming to financial to, uh, to educational to uh, commercial, uh, everything from Harvard Business School, York University to uh, EA Sports, E-Trade Financial. Uh, most of these customers are, are using uh, life rate in more than a, as a single capacity. Uh, because LifeRay is a platform that offers so many different types of functionalities all bundled within LifeRay, uh, a CMS, the social collaboration aspect, multi-tenanting, the pure portal play, uh, all these different functionalities that come bundled with LifeRay. Uh, some of our customers will use LifeRay simply as a CMS. For instance, Sesame Street was one of our largest customers. They're one of our oldest customers. Um, it's Obviously, they have a very targeted market, but uh, it's actually a very high traffic site where they get about 1.8 million hits a day. They're pushing about two terabytes of data every day through our CMS to their customers. So it's, uh, it's a very robust site. Uh, it's been around for, for quite a few years, and as a matter of fact, we're upgrading them now to 6.1. Uh, all the way to uh, some, company, uh, some companies like Cisco, for instance, uh, they have about five or six different library deployments. Primarily, Cisco is using us as a social collaboration network. If you go to um, uh, the social developer network, you'll see that that's built on LifeRay, and it's a, a simple collaboration uh, site that allows different developers for, uh, within the Cisco community across the world to be able to collaborate, uh, get on forums, and exchange ideas. Etc. Uh, there are customers of ours that get into LifeRay for one reason and then discover that there's other fe features. For instance, uh, not on here, one of our customers is uh, Blue Cross Blue Shield, which is an insurance company down in the U.S. Uh, they originally purchased LifeRay as an intranet. They started using LifeRay as an intranet and then discovered, wow, I've got a free CMS here. And it's a very powerful CMS. Why am I not using it? Why do I have to pay another license to use it? Because I already have it with LifeRay. So right now, they're migrating everything from SharePoint over to, to our CMS and be able to host everything on 
on LifeRay. Uh, this is just kind of a, another idea of the value that you get with LifeRay. Uh, instead of having to maintain multiple licenses, multiple different types of technologies, because we pack so much into LifeRay, you can do so much with LifeRay. Uh, when you get into LifeRay, you can eventually migrate all of these different functionalities into LifeRay and have a single platform to maintain. Um, 6.1 is our current shipping version. Uh, it is the culmination of about 11 years, so actually 12 years of development. So uh, although we are a young company, we've only been incorporated since 2004, the LifeRay project actually began in the year 2000. Uh, our chief software architect, Brian Chan, uh, started developing LifeRay for a nonprofit organization he was involved in. And uh, uh, he went out at that time, back in 2000, and tried to purchase a, a portal and uh, couldn't afford, they couldn't, didn't have the money to purchase what was available at that time. Uh, at that time, portals were a little bit different than they are right now. Uh, so he decided to build his own with the features that he wanted. Uh, that basic code that he started with in 2000 has largely been remained the same over all these years. Of course, it's been optimized. A lot more has been added to it. It's been expanded, uh, it, bug fixes, etc. But essentially, the code has got about 10, 12 years uh, of maturity to behind it. So it's not a new product. It's not uh, something that we just created in the last couple of years. It has some legs. It has some history. Uh, and uh, it, from that perspective, it does have some maturity as far as the uh, portal product is concerned. Uh, we are a lightweight web platform. We are considered a lean portal. Uh, the whole download is a couple hundred megabytes, and we're talking about the full enterprise edition with all the plugins, with all the features, with all the bundle capability. Uh, compare that to, say, uh, Oracle. Oracle Web Center, I think, is three DVDs of install, and then after you install it, you have to actually configure all the different pieces and put it all together to make it work. Whereas LifeRay, you extract it, you hook it up to whatever database you want, or you use our internal database, and you're up and running. Uh, we do have an integrated workflow. It is our own workflow engine. I'll, hopefully, I'll be showing it to you here shortly. It's called the Kaleo workflow engine with some, uh, uh, some, some premium features that you generally won't find in a bundled workflow uh, application. Um, advanced publishing features that we'll be talking a little bit about. Uh, we do have multi-device support. We have a, de uh, a detection layer that goes into the whole mobile strategy of how LifeRay is very, very mobile friendly. We have the ability to detect what type of device you're accessing a particular website with in a system of mobile device rules that you can apply, uh, such as if somebody hits our site with an iPad, then do this, or somebody hits our site with an Android, then do this. Uh, this whole system is built into LifeRay and kind of cooked into the content creation. Um, Business-defined content types, the ability to actually go and uh, make a definition for perhaps a, a Word document. It's not simply a Word document, but it's a sales order, uh, or it's a... Uh, um, a white paper. Whatever the case may be, uh, once you be are able to uh, actually assign a particular business context to your documents, it enriches that metadata layer for how you manage documents. It's not just a folder with a bunch of PDFs or not just a folder with a bunch of doc files, but rather it's a folder of sales orders, it's a folder of POs, it's a folder of uh, technical documents, however you decide to do that, and I'll be showing you that as well. Uh, user customizable pages. This is the ability to allow your individual end user to dictate what they want to see on their page. So very much like Google, you can have uh, a portion of the page that you designate that says, I want to rearrange my page this way. I want to see a weather ticker here, maybe a stock ticker here. Uh, I want to be able to see this portlet, but not that portlet. That's all customizable. You can push that down to your actual users. Uh, so very quickly, some of the key features of LifeRay 6.1, the content management piece, collaboration services, uh, blogs, wiki, wikis, uh, message boards, the ease of extensibility, ease of integration, the ease of administration that we'll be showing you as well, the design and usability of LifeRay, how easy it is to actually use, not just from a development point of view, but as your users come into LifeRay, the low learning curve, uh, analytics and management that's built into LifeRay. Mm -hmm. So with that, let me just hop in very quickly to uh, the first uh, bullet here, which is uh, the web content management. And instead of kind of reading through this, I'm just going to really quickly run into, uh, jump over here and, sh and show you. Uh, this, is, uh, this is my live LifeRay uh, instance. It's actually running on my laptop. It's a MacBook Pro. This is the full enterprise edition. So you can see it's a very lightweight. It does not require a whole lot of hardware to actually run. Uh, but just, I just want to show you a couple things real here, real quickly about the web content. Uh, I have some sample content built in here and some sample users built in here. I'm going to log in as my top level administrator. His name is Bruno. Uh, Bruno, by the way, is actually an employee of LifeRay. He's an engineer in our Brazil office, uh, but he's a uh, Known more, known more widely as Bruno Admin. He's been our, our default administrator for many, many, many years, many versions of LifeRay. Um, 
Uh, actually, there's, there's some very funny stories about Bruno. There, he was uh, he was actually traveling in in Europe one uh, one year, and uh, somebody came to came to, saw him actually in the public. Uh, it was a market or something, and said, "Are you Bruno Admin?" And he was like, <laughs> "So obviously, there's a lot of people out there using LifeRay, and they actually recognized him from his picture and said, "I know you. You're Bruno Admin." And he says, "Yeah, yeah, it's me." <laughs> so I'm logged in as Bruno, my top level administrator, and uh, as such, uh, you can see that all of the, all these various ports let's uh, have some edit controls here. I can actually come in here and uh, manage these different portlets. But uh, what I really want to show you here is just the ease of being able to add new uh, pages. I just uh, This is a, a site, that, a sample site that we've built out. But uh, as you can see, it's fairly easy for me to add a page without any kind of technical knowledge at all. Uh, I'm not a technical person. I'm just a sales guy. So even I can add a page here. But uh, uh, these things that I'm showing you here uh, are basically the, the portlets, the uh, applets or applications that are bundled with LifeRay. Uh, they're all JSR 286 compliant, the Java standard compliant. Uh, as you can see, there's about 70, 70 some portlets that's bundled with LifeRay that comes by default. And uh, they're broken down by different uh, types of usage. For instance, BI, uh, collaboration type portlets, uh, web content management. For the time being, I'm just going to pull up a web content display portlet and uh, and show you uh, just the ease of being able to deploy. It's all drag and drop. And of course, I don't have to stick with uh, web content. I can build a mashup page fairly easily of different types of features. I can have a bloggers. Uh, I can have a, a document uh, gallery. Uh, basically, as you can see, it's all drag and drop, a calendar. And then once I've deployed it, I can uh, rearrange it very easily. Uh, the ease of use, really, in terms of using LifeRay, building pages, uh, is not doesn't require any kind of technical knowledge. Once I've done that, I can actually go and if I don't like that particular layout, I can change my layouts. Uh, these are just some sample layouts I have uh, within my demo environment, but you can create as many different layouts as you want. You can extend these layouts to whatever your needs are. But uh, the, the idea here is that you can push this out, and uh, once you've pushed it out, uh, it becomes available for your users to to uh, to use and uh, change. So uh, I've created a, a something called a web content display portlet. I just want to give you a, a real quick view of how easy it is to actually actually come in and create uh, content. So uh, I've created a piece. I've created a portlet. I'm displaying a portlet. I'm going to come and create some new content. And uh, as you can see, we have a WYSIWYG editor here. Uh, again, for your content creation people, there's not a huge learning curve. There's no need to understand HTML. They can create an, uh, what you see is what you get type of editor. Uh, everybody knows what, how to use something like this. Everybody's seen it before. They know that B means bold. They can change this, their text uh, types. They can change their font sizes, et cetera, et cetera. And then uh, publishing it out, it's just really that easy. I've created a new piece of content. Now, of course, this doesn't really show you much. But I also want to talk very quickly about the idea of how content, once you've created content, it's not simply a static piece of content sitting on a page. It goes into a repository uh, that becomes then available to be republished over and over and over again. This idea of create once, publish many times, create once, use many times. That's true whether it's a piece of web content, whether it's a development effort, a development project, whether it's a, a blog post, a wiki post, a, um, um, a web a message board article, it all becomes available. Any asset that you create within the portal becomes available as an asset to be published or used again wherever you want. So I've created a piece of content here, but I, I'm going to come down here and actually select another piece of content that I created earlier, uh, just to see. Sorry, here. give me, forgive me one second. My, there we go. Um, let me see if I can find it here very quickly. It must be on the next page. All right, so I'm selecting a piece of content called Welcome Mike that I actually created earlier. And uh, if that looks kind of familiar, it's, all, it's also the same content that I'm showing here on my Welcome page. So as you can see, this same piece of content I'm actually deploying in uh, two different places here. Uh, I can deploy that on any page that I want. I can deploy that on any website that I want. If I uh, wanted to have it available for the global scope. I can scope it up to the global uh, scope and have it available across many, many different types of websites. Perhaps you have a, a press release that needs to be published across multiple departmental websites. You would put it in the global scope. Or you can scope it down to as narrow as you want. For instance, if you have a piece of content that's only supposed to be available to a particular website or even a particular page, you can scope it down so that it's not available. It's up to you. You control that. Uh, the idea here is that that asset is a persistent 
constant asset within the portal. Uh, even if I deleted this portlet or deleted this page, that, and that p this particular piece of content would, would persist. Um, as you can see, I've got actually got some edits already in here, but I want to show you uh, this idea of being able to come in here and now looking at the, our WYSIWYG editor here, uh, you can see that I've got uh, graphics, I've got links, I've got uh, different types of uh, content, uh, font types, and uh, if I'm going to come in here and uh, create, I already have, uh, actually has some leftover from my last demo, create uh, some edits, uh, I can publish it out very quickly. And uh, once I've done that, uh, you can see that uh, this new edits that I've created uh, appear in both places where I have this uh, particular piece of content uh, displayed. And this is true whether I have it displayed 10 times, 15 times, once or twice, it doesn't matter. Uh, if I wanted to apply workflow to it, let me just uh, show you very quickly, uh, get into the workflow aspect of our workflow engine. I'm going to show you our workflow creation, uh, workflow configuration screen. These are assets that I have available to apply workflow to. Uh, that we're certainly not limited to this. You can, you can extend this list to, to uh, cover any custom content or custom asset that you create. You can uh, apply workflow to basically any asset that you have, any activity that you have, uh, whether it's, a, um, whether it's a, an activity associated with a particular piece of content or document or, or even a process you can apply workflow to. So in this case right now, I'm going to come to web content here and I'm going to apply workflow to this particular piece of, uh, uh, this particular asset or asset type, which is a content. Once I've applied this now, I can go back and I want to show you how this works. I'm going to sign out as Bruno. And I'm going to sign back in as Michelle. Michelle is my editor. So she has, uh, her role is the content creation role or the editor role. And as such, uh, she's going to come in here to this piece of content and perhaps uh, make some changes. And we're going to say these are going to be Michelle's edits. Okay? And uh, she's going to come here and she's going to, Publish that out. Let me see. Is workflow turned on? I forgot to save that. Let me come back to Bruno. And what I did wrong, I forgot to save my workflow configuration. Let me come back here. Workflow, web content, single approver. There we go. Now it's working. So uh, I'm going to come back in here and sign back in as Michelle. And uh, her edits already came in, so let's make some more edits. Okay, and uh, you can see that she no longer has the ability to publish, but rather she uh, has to submit for publication because workflow has been turned on for web content. Uh, once we've done that, uh, you see her new edits have not actually shown up. So we're going to sign out as Michelle and uh, sign back in as uh, Richard. Richard is our publisher, so he has the role of being able to approve content. So uh, we're going to log in as Richard. Uh, Richard's going to go to his control panel. And uh, as you can see, he doesn't have nearly as much uh, uh, access to different things that he can do as an administrator. But one thing he does have access to is his workflow tasks. So we see now that there's a workflow task that's been assigned to the role of publisher. There may be multiple publishers. So uh, as such, Richard's going to come in very quickly and uh, assign this particular uh, task to himself. And once he's done that, he sees assigned to me right now, I've got a review task. Uh, the asset title is called Welcome Mike, which is what we, the one we picked. The asset type is uh, web content, uh, the last activity date, and a due date. Uh, Richard at this point has the ability to approve, reject, reassign, or update the due date. So let's say we're going to uh, approve it. He's going to say, good job, Michelle. Put a little note to her, OK. And uh, let's go back to LifeRay, and we see that uh, her poor spelling has been uh, uh, published out. So as such, well, we see that uh, how workflow has been applied in a very simplistic way to web content. But let me log back in as Bruno here real quickly one more time and uh, go back to my, uh, my, my dialog box for my web content. He comes in here and says, wow, this is really poor spelling and, uh, you know, I can't, I can't have this. We can go back and look at the history. Okay, we see in here that uh, there's a whole history of different things that uh, has been done. And he says, we have, to, we have to roll this back. All right, so we're going to delete. Uh, maybe we're going to delete uh, a number of versions and roll it back to an earlier version uh, of the content. Uh, and uh, roll it all the way back to maybe version 1.1. So managing versions is something that's very easy within LifeRay. Uh, it's, been, it's built in, uh, versioning history. So we're back, uh, actually we're 
I could probably roll back one more time to another, to another to an earlier version of Life Ray. I mean, the earlier version of this particular piece of content. But as you can see, what we have in here a history of the versioning. Uh, however many edits that you do, you can always roll back. You have the ability to to retrace your steps. This is true for web content. This is also true for any other types of assets that you have as well. Versioning is built in. So just very quickly, uh, just uh, some some features about web content. Let me uh, move on to the next uh, next uh, couple of slides here. I talked a little bit about this. We have structures and templates. Uh, the way the structures and templates works within LifeRay, let me uh, show you that very quickly. Uh, basically, structures and templates is the ab ability to create uh, a structured content. So, for instance, if you have... Um, let's say, for instance, you have a press release, and you have that press release that you want to maintain the same logo, the same font, the same look and feel, so you have continuity from one press release to the next. You can actually determine that in a structure or a template, or a structure and a template, and have that available so that your content creator doesn't have to worry about formatting. Uh, to give you an idea of how that works, this is a, just a piece of sample content that we have in here. Uh, I'm going to come in here and uh, go to my uh, edit screen. I've already got a couple of different templates already set up for this piece of structure. So uh, let's say I want to move the image to the right. Uh, and I, I actually I need to publish, I need to turn that out, submit for publication. Let me go to my workflow here and turn this off very quickly and approve this. Okay, it's been approved. Let me just turn my workflow off so we don't keep running into that. No workflow. Save. Okay. Uh, I don't know if you noticed this, but this uh, piece of content, the image is moved from the left to the right. Uh, let, me, let me just pull up another template real quickly as well. Uh, let me try image left but with a larger title. Okay, if I publish that out, you can see that I've changed the content of the title. So the idea here is that you can create structured, temp uh, structured content so that you control how that particular piece of content is going to look. And then once you push that template out to your uh, content creators, all they're worried about is writing the text. And you can control what size font. And this is the idea behind the, uh, uh, using, using structures uh, and templates to be able to control your content. boxes from 6.0. Yeah, the dialog box has changed slightly in 6.1 uh, in both versions of Community and Enterprise Edition. So the, uh, this, this, this dialog box has changed a little bit here. All right, so it looks a little bit different, but all the features are there. There are some new features that have been added in 6.1, but in 6.0 to 6.1, this looks a little bit different. But uh, the structures and templates were available in both versions. Uh, content sharing, I've talked about a little bit of how uh, content is not a static content, but it actually can be shared across uh, your, your global repository. We have something called an asset publisher portlet. Uh, basically, it's the ability to show any content type within a portlet. Uh, you can show, uh, 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 you can deploy an asset publisher and have every single piece of content you have in your portal displayed as an abstract, or you can filter it down by content type. You can filter it by category. You can filter it by creator. Let's say, for instance, you want to have a portlet that displays only blogs, and uh, you want to be able to display only blogs from a particular blogger, and you want to display only blogs from a particular blogger over the last two weeks. You have the ability to drill down and filter by all those different criteria, and uh, so that that portlet, once you've set it up, it will automatically, dynamically update that content every time a new blog from that blogger comes up, every time uh, the two weeks passes, whatever criteria you've set. So it's a very interesting portlet, very powerful portlet for you to be able to display lots of different types of information. Um, one thing that you could do is, for instance, display an asset publisher portlet that shows a view of videos you have stored, for instance. And perhaps you want to format that portlet to show a thumbnail of each video. And then perhaps you want to have a thumbnail of each video with a small abstract underneath it. So basically what you've created is a YouTube landing page. You can do that with asset publisher. No development. It's just configuration. So a very interesting portlet. Uh, multi-repository integration. One of the new features of 6.1 is this idea of a pluggable repository architecture. Via the CMIS protocol, we now have the ability of not simply using our document library to add uh, files and folders. I'm just going to pull this up and actually show you very quickly. Uh, uh, not just files and folders, but actually being able to uh, map in complete rep third-party repositories. So, for instance, I can come in and uh, map in just with a URL, a documentum repository, 
uh, a SharePoint repository, maybe it's an Alfresco repository. Any type of content management system that supports CMIS can be surfaced within LifeRay. Uh, the, uh, the powerful nature of this is this idea that uh, you, don't have to, you don't necessarily have to migrate your existing technology into LifeRay. If you're already a SharePoint house, if you're already a Documentum house, LifeRay can be deployed alongside of those different types of technologies without you necessarily having to migrate content into LifeRay, but you can surface that content in LifeRay, have it available in LifeRay, and once you've brought it into LifeRay, as far as your users in the portal is concerned, they're just seeing it as another folder. They don't know that they're going to necessarily a SharePoint folder or perhaps going out to a Documentum folder. And of course, once you've brought it into the portlet framework of LifeRay, LifeRay is taking over all the authorizations, taking over all the uh, management of who gets to see what. So a very powerful feature in terms of being able to leverage existing uh, technologies. And again, this kind of plays into this whole idea of low cost of adoption. If you already have SharePoint deployed, you don't have to give up your SharePoint. If you already have some other uh, CMS deployed, you don't have to give that up. LifeRay will work alongside with it and leverage all the strengths of that and allow you to still be able to use LifeRay for what you need it for. Um, usability as far as content management, uh, you know, your, you, each, each individual users can change their views of the repository folders. You have inline preview of documents, uh, inline preview of the uh, that metadata. Document metadata is very easy to find, very easy to create. Every piece of document, every folder has the, uh, the ability to create a very ri rich metadata layer that then can be indexed and searched on. Um, we make collaboration, uh, collaborating on documents very easy. We've got check-in, check-out features. In many ways, LifeRay is approaching ECM capabilities. I'm not, we're not saying that we are an ECM. We're not competing in that space. Uh, we don't necessarily want to compete in that space. However, we're offering features in LifeRay that allow uh, you to really pull a lot of different components, whether it's uh, pulling in workflow, pulling in the ability to have the uh, pluggable repository, pulling in the ability to create uh, custom uh, content types, business content types. We also have the ability to make uh, on-the-fly relationships between types of assets. For instance, you have a, uh, a, a sales order type of content, and you want to have a relationship between the sales order and a legal contract. So your salesperson goes, and he says, hey, I want to I close this deal. I'm going to fill out the sales order. Boom, I'm going to su submit it. You can create a relationship to it that says, no, 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 you can't do that because there, you need to have a, a legal contract executed first. And then you create a workflow that ties the one piece of content to the other that are related that says, sales order cannot be executed until the contract is signed. So then you can see you're pulling in all different functions of these different pieces of LifeRay and giving you the basis to be able to create your own content management application, enterprise content management application. So a very interesting way that uh, LifeRay has really kind of upped its game as far as document management, uh, some of the features that we have. Uh, user data lists. User data lists are very much like SharePoint lists. Uh, the ability to create on the fly uh, user lists that uh, basically it's, it's really more of a, uh, uh, a, a way to build very quick applications within LifeRay that uh, uh, allow you to... Um, leverage lists and leverage uh, uh, records and, and, and uh, leverage uh, responses and input to, to that uh, without any kind of development. Actually, it's probably easier for me to show you than it is to actually talk about it. So I'm going to back in here as Bruno, and I'm going to go into my control panel, and uh, I'm going to show you how uh, the dynamic data lists work. So let's say, for instance, the first thing I want to do is I want to create a definition. Um, and perhaps, I, I've, actually, I have a definition already created, but let me just say I'm going to create a new definition called uh, Roadshows. All right, and actually, let me just uh, add it in here. I'm going to call this a roadshow, and uh, maybe it's a roadshow uh, registration. Let's call it roadshow registration. Am I spelling this correctly? Okay, so I've got a, a definition called road for So as you can see, I've pulled up a palette here that allows me to uh, very quickly create a form uh, that allows me to just kind of use a palette and. Uh, create a quick form for this particular record or this template, if, if you will. And maybe I want to come in here and uh, change the name of this one to uh, and call this uh, description. Uh, very flexible in terms of what you want to be able to do with these different fields. And maybe this one we're going to come in here and call this uh, name. Okay. Uh, and we've created a little form here. And we're going to save this form off. And this is our, our definition, our, our template, or if you will. And then I'm going to create a new data list. All right, and we're going to call this uh, Montreal Roadshow Registration. 
All right, and uh, I'm going to select uh, the data definition that I just created. I just created something called row. For, I'm going to create that, as, select that as my template, and uh, maybe I'm going to apply a workflow to it. And once I've saved that off, I've created this uh, this particular uh, this this particular user data list. Let me go to my uh, page over here and uh, just uh, display and deploy something called a dynamic data list display. All right, I'm going to pull that out here. And uh, I've deployed a portlet that now I can go and select my roadshow, my, my, my Montreal roadshow record form. All right, so now I've got a, a form that's built out here that any user can come in now and add a record, okay? He clicks on the record, and today's date, I think it has a date picker, uh, option one, option two, option three, whatever that might be, you can, you, up to you to decide. Description, I'm going to a roadshow, and uh, uh, my name. Okay, so as you can see, I've, uh, I have to submit this for publication because uh, I've got workflow uh, attached to it. So as you can see, I can build, I have a record built out here, and uh, as more people come in, the more, the more this record actually extends and builds out. But you can see that I've just built a small form that uh, without any development, without any kind of technical expertise, and you can build this for whatever you want, an RSVP list, a, um, uh, you can use it for, for e-commerce applications, for, you, know, you can use it for basically anything that you want to do uh, uh, as far as building lists, building forms, and you can make this as complex as you want. You can have multiple workflows attached to it. You can have multiple stages of workflow attached to it. You can use it for um, subscription of, of, of to, to prescri prescription medicine. You can use it for uh, doctors doing rounds in a hospital and checking blood pressure and in entering inf information in there. How many times a patient has received their medication? Lots of different applications of how you can use user lists. But the idea here is that it doesn't require any technical expertise. Your business users can create this with very little bit of, uh, just a little bit of training. So uh, really neat, new, powerful new features uh, uh, in as far as the user data list is concerned. Um, business defined content types, I spoke about that really er earlier, but I just want to show you one more time real quickly. I uh, lost my, there we go. Uh, as far as uh, um, the ability to create co uh, business defined content types. So again, not, not simply having an image uh, or having, uh, you know, here's Bruno's image here. Uh, you can actually come in here and define a particular content type. I mentioned earlier that uh, these are just some sample content types I have in here. I mentioned earlier that we can create uh, uh, context for, for documents. So let me say, let me say I want to come in here and I want to say uh, admin uh, avatars. Okay, so for us, I'm going to create a specific content type called admin avatars. And then I can come in here, once again, I have the same palette in here. I can add in whatever... Uh, features that I want or fields that I want for this particular, uh, for this particular uh, type of content. And let me say I want to come back in here and change this to uh, role type. All right, uh, maybe he's, uh, he's a role. And I'm going to come in here and change this to name. And uh, same palette, same concept, same idea. Once I've saved that off, now when I come and actually add something to this folder, I can actually say, instead of adding just a document or a basic document, I can say, I'm going to add an admin avatar. And now I can upload a file that goes into that, uh, into that folder as a specific type of image, not just a regular image. Now, of course, this is very simplistic uh, in terms of what I'm doing here, but you can see the implications here. Uh, whether you're uploading whatever file you're trying to, uh, to manage, you know, uh, whether it's uh, an API, perhaps it's an SDK, perhaps it's a piece of code, uh, perhaps it's some kind of uh, document, legal document, you can apply different types uh, of context to it. And once you've done that, you have the ability to have all this metadata available to you for this particular piece of content type that now can be searched and indexed. So very uh, rich ability to have all this built into the way we manage content within, um, within LifeRay. Do you support videos also? Absolutely, absolutely. Uh, we, you, you can use, uh, let me just show you very quickly, you can integrate Vimeo, uh, YouTube, you can in integrate using our uh, WCMS and play videos through that as well. So it's all supported within LifeFrame. Uh, one thing I want to mention, though, if you're going to do high level, high high traffic streaming, you're probably going to want to use a uh, a video caching server or something like that. LifeRay, from its document system uh, out to play, it will play. But if you have high traffic, then you're probably going to want to have some kind of a server. Um, 
Let's see, did I talk about advanced publishing? Uh, advanced publishing, yes. Very quickly, uh, in LifeRay 6.0, we introduced something called staging. That's internal staging. So very much like uh, a development process where you might have a development integration server to a staging server, and then from that staging server, all the fine final uh, changes are, are done before it's pushed live. We have that built into LifeRay. So within the instance of LifeRay, you can actually stage, have a staged site. What it's actually doing behind the scenes is actually copying your site and putting it in a hidden site. And what you're actually working on is the hidden version of that site, and then you can tell exactly by, by color coding whether you're in the stage site or the live site. And then once you're ready to go live, you can publish that live. You can publish that live to a, your local instance, or you can publish that live remotely to another LifeRay server if you want. And then you can apply workflow to that staging as well that says uh, you can't go live until you have X amount of different people that are signed off on it, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, one of the new features in LifeRay as far as the stage staging is concerned in 6.1 is the ability to branch the staging. You can have multiple branches of a particular stage site. You can have multiple versions of a stage site. So for instance, uh, you're a retail type of site and you have maybe a fall campaign, a winter campaign, a spring campaign, and a summer campaign. Uh, different looks and feel for your website. The winter one has snow. The summer one has you know, green leaves, whatever the case may be. You can have four versions of your website ready to go with all your content updated and just simply publish one live when the time comes. You can have it even automatically published live. So, uh, uh, or perhaps you have, uh, you're doing some kind of a UAT, user acceptance testing. You can have multiple versions of a website and you have a user acceptance population that are saying, no, I don't like this one. Oh, this colors look bad. Yeah, this is the right one. Whatever the case may be, you can use that, that staging mechanism to be able to do that kind of stuff and have it all, all updated, yet not live. And then as soon as a decision is made to publish it live, you can retire your live site and publish the new one live. You can do it locally and remotely. So some of the new uh, versions. You can actually also then take a branch and merge it back into a single uh, site if you want. Two features of two different branches merge back in. Uh, all of these things are available within the staging cap capacities of LifeRace content management. Uh, faceted search. We have the ability to do faceted search that's being handled on the LifeRay side. By default, LifeRay uses the Lucene search engine. Uh, however, you can plug in any search engine you want. You can plug in Solar. Uh, you can plug in a Google Search Appliance. Whatever you want to use as a search engine, we still handle the faceting on our end. So it doesn't really matter what search engine you use. You can have uh, the avail avail availability of faceted search. And really, the faceted search is, is, is being driven by, um, it's being driven by uh, your, your metadata layer. Uh, so, for instance, if I come into look, just uh, my little demo here, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put in LifeRay. But I just find it's so small on my screen, I can't see it. I'm um, going to come in here and search LifeRay. Okay, so I've just searched the term LifeRay, and this is just my local content here. But as you can see, it's fa I can drill down, it's faceted by you know, calendar events. Maybe I only want to see LifeRay based on calendar events. You know, or uh, maybe I want to see LifeRay based on... Um, uh, white papers. So, you know, uh, basically, the fasting allows you to index down and drill down very quickly to specific facets, and all of that's driven by the metadata. So, the richer your metadata is for your particular content, the more facets you're going to have. And again, the idea of each particular business, uh, content type, you have the ability to have a, a very large and thick metadata layer. But faceted search again is built in by LifeRay, regardless of what what uh, what search engine you wind up using. Uh, let me see here. Related content, I spoke about that earlier. The ability to uh, go into a particular piece of content and create relationships. Um, let me just go back to uh, my document library. All right, so for instance, if I'm going to pull up, uh, I'm going to pull up a, uh, a white paper here. Taking us some time. There we go. So this is my preview of my white paper. Uh, and if I go into and click on the edit mode, I can come in here and say what related what assets are related to this particular white paper. I can choose really any asset that's that's available within LifeRay. Uh, right now, these are these are uh, assets that we have by default out of LifeRay. We've got blogs, message boards, web content, calendar events. You can extend this to any custom content type that you like. So, for instance, you can make an asset that you can relate a blog post to a video, for instance. Or perhaps you're going um, to you're gonna have a message board post and relate that to a uh, wiki article. Whatever content types you have, you can create these relationships between the two so that when someone goes and looks at a particular 
piece of content or a particular asset, they can immediately see that there's relation, uh, other related assets that allows them to then click on those links and pull that asset up. And then, of course, you can pl apply workflow between those assets, as I was mentioning earlier. You can't do this until you do that with the related assets. Uh, you can't fill out a sales order until you've signed a, a contract. You can't you know, comment on this message board post until you've viewed the video. Whatever it is that you want to be able to do to tie workflow and link these two assets in. Uh, related content. Liferay Sync. Liferay Sync is a new feature in 6.1. As a matter of fact, it just went into release uh, not very long ago, a couple weeks ago. Um, it's actually in release right now. But event essentially, what Liferay Sync is, is uh, you're familiar with Dropbox. Uh, Dropbox is very, very pre prevalent. A lot of different people use it. Most corporations do not allow their employees to use Dropbox. Why? Because your data is out in the cloud. Who knows where Dropbox is keeping their stuff? They say it's secure. Maybe it is, maybe it isn't. I keep all my files on Dropbox. But my stuff is not that important. All right? But uh, most corporations, most enterprises say, don't use Dropbox, you're not allowed to use it. Liferay Sync allows you to have that same ubiquity to create a localized version piece of your content on your laptop, on your iPhone, on your tablet, whatever it is, to have a local copy of it that automatically syncs to your Liferay server. So think of it in terms of Dropbox, but behind the firewall. Uh, behind your firewall because it's syncing to your Liferay server. So just let me show you very quickly. I've got uh, I've got Dropbox. I've got Life. I've got Dropbox and Liferay sync uh, loaded here. But this is my my local my local folder here. All right. This is on my local machine here. I've got a sync site. I've got documents. I've got uh, a bunch of stuff in here. Now I'm going to go back to. Actually, let me log out as Bruno and log in as myself on my uh, demo environment and uh, show you how that works very quickly. Uh, I'm going to go to my Liferay Sync site. Am I doing on time? Uh, going to my Liferay Sync site. Okay, so here's my, here's my sync folder here. I've got these, fo these different documents in here that uh, are, are being as part of my sync site. So I'm going to take a look at this. It's called, this is a white paper called Identity Management. Uh, I'm going to come down in here and, oops. Actually, I need to. I need to be. I didn't, I didn't come in as my. I didn't, I didn't give myself administrative rights for that site. So let me come back in as Bruno to Life Race uh, to this site, and now I can come in. And uh, if I come in and delete this particular document, you can see that that is going to sync very quickly, and. Uh, it just deleted out of here as well. I don't know, it's not a very good demo, but you can see that uh, basically the, uh, and it would, it would also be deleted on my iPhone, on my iPad, whatever the case may be. So in other words, it works just like Dropbox, except it allows you to uh, do it in a safe and secure manner. Now, the other thing, the neat thing about Liferay Sync is the fact that you can, uh, you know how in Dropbox you have to have one particular Dropbox, and you have to log back out and log back into a different one if you have to manage a different one. Liferay Sync uh, allows you to manage multiple multiple sites that you can, you can uh, uh, sync to. So uh, for the enterprise edition, I can actually sync to as many different sites as I want at the same time simultaneously. Uh, the community edition of Liferay, Liferay Sync only allows you to sync to one site at a time. But you have the option to be able to very quickly just change whatever sync site you want to sync to and I'll be able to update it. I'm running out of time here real quick. All right, so I need to move a little, a little quicker. I'm not even halfway through. So ease of administration. Uh, dynamic site templates, something built into Liferay, ability to create one template that uh, uh, you can push out to many, many different sites. The idea of dynamic site templates is that if you have a change, for instance, you've pushed out a corporate theme, for instance, uh, to many different departments. Your departmental administrators are actually creating the sites, uh, and you change your corporate logo. Instead of going to the five or six or seven different places where that particular template is being used, you change the master template, you update your logo, automatically it propagates across all the different sites that that template is being used. So it allows you as an administrator to tightly control look and feel, UI, theming, branding for everywhere that a template is being pushed out. Uh, same thing with page templates. We have the ability to do uh, creation of pre-configured pages. Perhaps you want to be able to have a page that's set out for a particular department. Uh, you want to control what they're using and what they see in that page. You can pre-configure a page or you can pre-configure a whole website. You can uh, have a whole website completely themed out and available as a, as a drop-down template. And uh, let me just show you very quickly how that, how that would look like. So for instance, I'm going to add something over here. Uh, 
I can, you can see that I can ha I've got some templates in here. I can add a blog page, for instance. All right, so I'm going to add a blog, which has already been templated out. And uh, the template has all this different stuff in it already. It has all this stuff in it. All right, so we pre-created that uh, particular uh, blog page. So it gives, you the, it gives you the ability to control and very easily push out to uh, your particular users uh, themed and templated types of, uh, uh, of sites and pages. Let me see, site management. Let me just hop, uh, hop ahead here very quickly. I've talked about workflow. Hop ahead very quickly. So we do have uh, a collaboration suite. Uh, I mentioned earlier that uh, when we were showing you the port list, everything's kind of categorized. But we have blogs, wikis, message boards, enterprise chat, uh, ratings and comments, the, this very Facebook kind of like uh, features that is uh, really take, becoming more and more prevalent within enterprise. Uh, more and more companies are using this because it boost productivity of their users. It's not simply uh, users going out to Facebook and playing and chatting with their friends, but rather using that in an enterprise capacity for business. So the idea behind these uh, tagging and categorizations, ratings and comment, really plays to this concept of social equity uh, or social activity. So, um, sorry about that. Uh, social equity, the ability to build, uh, I think one of the terms that's becoming more, more used widely is something called gamification. The ability to actually earn equity or earn points or earn status within your organization by the amount that you contribute. So for instance, you can set up a system where if somebody posts a blog, uh, they earn so many points. And if somebody gets so many plus ones for their blog, they earn more points. And they gain status. Uh, and what this encourages, it encourages your users, your work workers, the people within your enterprise, to contribute positively to the community of your particular organization. If you, uh, if you put you know, no, a, a rant post, uh, nobody's going to plus one it, nobody's going to you know, thumbs up it, nobody's going to read it, you're not going to get views. Uh, so it, it discourages negative types of contributions. It encourages things that will actually edify and build up your company, uh, this idea. And you'll find, and what we've found, is that people, people buy into this very easily because they're used to it. They've seen it before. They do it in Facebook. They want to have their comments and their posts liked as much as possible. You put that into an into a enterprise type of situation, you'll find that people uh, really begin to become more product productive in terms of what they're contributing. Within LifeRay, we use a Star Wars theme. So uh, X amount of message board posts or X amount of blogs, you become from a Padawan to a Jedi, and then you know, and become a Jedi master, et cetera. We have it all, all broken down. So you know, depending on how much you contribute and uh, how well you contribute, you, we, we build up status. And then, of course, you can turn that into maybe reward points. You know, somebody gets so many statuses, they earn a day off. Somebody gets so many status that so they get a gift card to, you know, American Express gift card, whatever the case may be. Lots of different ways that you can use that. But that's all built into LifeRay, the, the gamification, the idea of, of social equity. I mentioned earlier a little bit about LRUI, and I think I'm going to defer that to, uh, to uh, Savo Fair to talk a little bit more, more about the, uh, the, the more uh, technical aspects of it. Uh, I'm going to just very much, very quickly, I also want to mention accessibility, a big issue in, in the U.S., I'm sure here in this country as well. We have a standard uh, called WCAG 2.0 that we comply with. Um, Basically, it's compatible with building dynamic webs, uh, building uh, applications using Web 2.0 techniques. Especially within the U.S. government, we have something called the 508 uh, Compliancy, uh, which has a which is, which is a law that dictates that websites have that are 508 compliant must be compliant, so that uh, handicapped people can have access to them, blind people can have access to them, uh, text readers can be able to access them, etc. LifeRay is completely compatible and supports these uh, different functionalities. Uh, really, it's how you develop the theme. Um, extensibility and integration. Uh, we do provide a, a SAML identity provider hook, one of the new features of 6.1. Aside from supporting LDAP, OpenSSO, OpenID, CAS, SiteMinder, NTLM, all the, uh, uh, um, the different SSOs we support out of the box, what we've added in, uh, in, in 6.1 is uh, support for SAML, not simply as a service provider. So it's not simply as a, uh, um, a, a provider for SAML, but also as an IDP, as an identity provider. The neat thing about it is that you can actually set LifeRay up as a federated credential provider if you don't have a third, uh, a third party SSO, or if you wanted to have a parallel SSO, you can use LifeRay as your single sign-on provider to then access other applications or other uh, resources. 
uh, ability to create custom fields, uh, uh, extending all of your custom, all the fields that, that we've been talking about uh, the uh, for all your assets. You can create custom fields very easily, uh, whether it's users, your organizations, your pages, your documents, etc. Anything that we don't provide out of the box, it's all extensible. You can create that very easily. Again, no development here. We're just talking about configuration. No database changes is required. It automatically updates your database tables if you create custom fields or extend uh, the fields within a particular asset type. Uh, asset framework, again, the uh, ability to take what assets do we have out of the box and create your own custom assets. You can leverage, your, uh, leverage everything that we already have and reuse what we have to be able to create uh, other custom content types that fit your particular needs. And of course, you can do it all from plugins. Uh, we have a rules integration engine that allows you to build intelligence into portlets using the drools language. So uh, another word, another phrase that's, that's used for this is targeted content. So for instance, uh, your one user logs in from Montreal, and they look at a website, and they see Montreal weather. And another user logs in from Los Angeles, and they can be looking at the same URL, same web page, same portlet, but be looking at uh, Los Angeles weather. You build that intelligence into the portlet that says, I want to know what city this particular user is from. And based on that particular piece of, at, piece of information, we target the content to that user. Now, that might be kind of a very simplistic use of it, but uh, we can pull any attribute from any user, their role, their name, their gender, any, any metadata associated with the user, where they're from, uh, what sites they belong to. We can even pull their behavior. Uh, what was the last five pages this user, this user viewed? Based on that information, we are now going to present this targeted content. So you can see there's a lot of commercial implications here. A user has been looking at soccer balls the last five pages. All right. So based on that information, you're going to show him soccer uniforms, maybe soccer balls, maybe soccer shoes, uh, whatever the case may be that you think might be interesting to them. So very much the same way like Amazon or some of these other large e-commerce uh, engines use that kind of intelligence. That's built into LifeRay. You can use that within LifeRay. Uh, Developer Studio I spoke about very uh, earlier in terms of uh, the development environment that, uh, that we use. Uh, and again, everything that I've spoke about so far is extensible and customizable. Our approach uh, in LifeRay, our philosophy is to embrace this idea of openness, open source, uh, open standards, uh, you being able to take what we give you, and if we give you 90, 95% of what you need out of the box, we give you the ability to take it that last 5% without extensive customization. It's not a huge customization effort. It's not a huge development effort. Uh, integrating, doing, doing, bringing custom portlets is an effort that takes days as opposed to months and months and months. And that's something that Savoir our partner here, can do for you. They can explain a little bit more in terms of the actual effort to create customizations within LifeRay. Uh, analytics and management is built into life where we have a built-in auditing portlet, uh, auditing framework that allows you to track any usage, any uh, usage within, uh, within the portal. What anybody's doing, what, how many times this page has been viewed, how many times that person has logged in. And once you've been able to do that, you can use the UI to do the query, the audit logs. And then you can actually pipe that into a reports generation portlet. Uh, we support Jasper reports. We support BIRT out of the box. Basically, that allows you to use Jaspersoft to create reports definition, upload them into an existing existing portlet and be able to query what you've, all the data that you've been, you've been collecting in the auditing framework. Integrating other business intelligence tools, very simple, very straightforward. A lot of our customers will integrate IBM Cognos or whatever the case may be. So you can use whatever reports engine that you want. Um, performance and monitoring, we support JMX uh, ex extensions, which allows you to have a graphical view of what's going on in the portal. So this is important for your system administrators that want to fine tune their cache or see how their clusters are performing. All this information is available within LifeRay. So I hope that I covered everything and I stayed within time. Any questions, uh, anything that I've talked about or anything that I didn't show you that you would like to see, I can show you very quickly.